Good morning, YouTube. It's Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I create this channel to provide light and love. I am a licensed social worker and a therapist. I was always told, do not say you're a social worker until you get your license. I guess that's how it goes. And hey, I can say that now. Woohoo! Happy Friday, and I hope you had a beautiful week. I had a great week. Um, yeah. So today I want to talk about guidance. This is coming out of my daily word. When I heed my guidance, every step I take leads me to God. If I find myself wondering which way to go or if I'm pondering a tough choice, I pause and connect with the best possible guide, my divine intuition. I began by remaining relaxed and open to divine inspiration. I have abiding trust in God as I consider my thoughts, feelings, and all I know about the choice I face. I am attentive to the impressions that arise within me as I release my concerns in prayer. I hold the guidance. I receive in my heart grateful for inner knowing and ready to move in the direction of my highest good i'm never alone in any decision i walk forward confidently knowing whatever the path ahead god is in every step um, when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. And that's from the book of John 16 and 13. God is in every step. That made me think of the song by Bobby Brown. Every little step I take, you will be there. That's God. Do you ever get mixed up about a decision you should make? I remember recently... Uh, when I was looking for a new job, I had another job pursuing me at the same time. I'm like, man, which decision, which, uh, you know, which job do I take? Sometimes when I have to make big decisions, I begin to ponder. But it always becomes crystal clear because God, the God in me, my intuition will always lead me to the right answer. I trust myself. Um, and I trust myself with people, with jobs, with the future move, because I feel clear with my intuition, which I feel is God saying, no, daughter, mm -mm, don't do that, or yes, daughter. I remember being married many moons ago, and the marriage wasn't good. Uh, my ex-husband was verbally abusive, was abusive with throw things, and, you know, we actually had a couple of fights, and it just was a toxic situation. And I, being the young 20-something-year-old woman, you know, I'm going to counseling. He came with me. I'm going to church. I'm going to my pastor at the time. I'm doing everything to fight for this marriage. And I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do? And I just hear this voice, free yourself. I'm like, what? Free yourself. And no, 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 I'm lying. I'm so sorry. He said, pray for yourself. Because I was praying for my ex-husband. Eh, it might have been free yourself. It was something for yourself. And I remember hearing that like twice. And I said, it's over. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to fight for this anymore. I am going to pray for myself and free myself. And, of course, that ultimately led to our divorce. And I'm greater later. So, um, that small, still voice, or that loud, audible voice, or however you get the download, is guiding you to a safe place. That's your intuition. Even times when I do snap decisions, like when I begin to work with this uh, private practice I'm at, it came from 
someone who I really didn't even talk to that much at church, didn't even have like a relationship with, but she was like, hey, I'm working with someone who has their own practice. Do you know someone that may want to work with her at the time? Of course, I wasn't licensed um, because I'm just licensed now, but I was a new um, clinician. And I'm like, well, me? <laughs> Here I go. I'm always talking about me. And I go and meet her. And the lady that runs the practice, she's very sure. <laughs> okay, that's the word I'm going to use. And I'm very sure, too. But I'm more laid back with my approach. So I go in her office. We're talking. She's like, what are you looking for? What are you looking for in a practice? What do you, what do, you, do you want your own practice? She's like throwing all these questions at me. Whoa, 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 Nelly. One thing with me, I don't I don't operate like that. I'm more deliberate and calculating. And honestly, definitely since over um, my age of over 40, I just really slow down when it comes to making big decisions. I don't jump and do something. I have to think about it. Sometimes I might write stuff out. I like to make good decisions. I just don't like to just do, you know, silly stuff. So she's throwing all this stuff at me, and I'm like, okay. She's like, well, let me know what you want, you know. And, she, and I had to get back to her in writing. And I told her what I was looking for. I know what I want. I'm just not very vocal about it, but I already I already wrote it down like 12 times. So long story short, here am I, <laughs> four years later, still working for her. She looks, she's still doing the same thing, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, which is such a blessing to have somebody to pour into you and mentor into you um but it's just funny to watch how different people are but i was saying all that to say i um didn't even really know the person that introduced me to the person that owns this practice and i was feeling apprehensive about even getting involved in it but i'm glad god my intuition led me that way then as the practice grew and grew, I was like, eh, I think I'm going to leave because it was some stuff I wasn't really, I was getting frustrated over. And it got better and better. And the more therapists under her, the more orderly things became. You know, that is hard. You're a one, one woman, you know, show. Then here I come. And she was trying to get it all together. But now it's probably, oh, I keep losing track, maybe it's five or six clinicians under her with her. So it's probably seven of us, which we've grown into a team. We have meetings, trainings. It's going really well. And I'm glad I did not quit. The two times I wanted to quit, it was like God was like, eh, don't do that. And so from 2020, well, I'll say 2018 and 2020, I have such a uh, consistent clientele now, or clients, um, but of course in 2018, I was a newer clinician. Honestly, it was some times where I had clients, I wasn't even sure exactly which way to go, but now um, I'm more seasoned, you know, um, trial and error, and you just hate to say trial and error with therapy, but it's just like being a teacher, a hairstylist. It doesn't matter. You, you just don't know everything. You just don't. So what I'm trying to say here on this podcast is trust your intuition. No, don't trust your girlfriend. Don't trust your sister. Don't trust this. Don't trust that. Go with them. What should I do? Should I buy this house? Trust your intuition. Should I marry this guy? Should I marry this woman? Should I ask this woman to be my wife? Trust your intuition. Should I take that job? Should I start my own business? Trust your intuition. I think I want to do this profession. Trust your intuition. You already know the answers lie within. Sometimes we go to other people for advice, but we already have the answer because it's within us. Have you ever been like walking down the street? Well, I know this happens a lot. And I'm like, somebody's behind me. And I look and sure enough, somebody's behind me. That's that Chicago West Side vision. <laughs> I could feel or I shouldn't go this way. This seems unsafe. You know, that's your intuition. You're on a date. Mm -hmm. Nah, this guy, he don't seem right. Trust your intuition. Stranger danger. Even, you know, even when you might meet a lady, you know, as a lady, 
meet another lady, like, mm, something is fishy about her. I know I do that often in an interview. I'll be like, mm -mm, I don't want to work with them. It's just certain energy people give off. You're like, mm -mm. I'll never forget. Um, I had a job in 2012. I love my, well, I didn't love my job. I always get ready to say that. I love the people I work with. I love the company. The work I did was, yeah. So uh, we got laid off. Um, it was a blessing. Not a blessing to get laid off, but the way they did it, I stayed on board with them, and I ended up getting these very nice quarterly bonuses, which led me to pay off my college um, debt that I owed to my school, which led me to enroll and get my master's degree. So it's such a blessing. Everything happens for a reason. And I loved my manager, Dave. Oh, I just loved him. So I could call or text him right now and we could still, um, you know, laugh and talk. But after we got laid off, of course, I was fine for a few months. And then I reapplied and got rehired. Did not like the manager I interviewed with. Like something was just off. I was like, I don't like this guy. He is not nice. Get hired. And I ended up working for him for a couple of years. And I was right. That guy was so insecure and uh, petty. That's what he was, real petty. And I just can't even. Uh, first of all, work is challenging. You know, you spend eight hours there. Sometimes we're doing things we don't even want to do. And then when you have a manager, that's difficult. It just makes the whole thing just a mess. Uh, and I remember coming to him. We would do one-on-one -on -one meetings. And I was like, you know... I just want to let you know I'm resigning. He jumped like, oh, oh, oh that was the best day ever. <laughs> and I was resigning because I, I had went back to school and I knew I was going to have an aggressive schedule as an intern, as a student. And I had to work, but I could work 40 hours. So I was able to quit. He was so shocked that I was so happy. So, so happy. And I let HR know. You know, they were asking about him. How was your last manager? Mm -mm. I said, nothing special. <laughs> HR, what? Well, why do you say that? Yeah, I had a few reasons why I told her. But, you know, um, my intuition served me right. I knew he wasn't going to be a good manager for me. And it, it, was, it was accurate. So when you go in these interviews, trust your gut. And if you got to be side by side with these people and they want to be rude during the interview or cold, sometimes it's worth passing that job up. Don't be miserable. This current job I have, my manager is just supportive. How are you? Any questions? Can I help you? Please don't hesitate. She does that every day, to be honest, with an email or we do a weekly meeting. Any more questions? Okay, can I help you with something? And guess what? I'm new there, two months in almost, and I get hung up. And so I feel safe to email her. I feel safe to text her. I feel safe to um, instant message her on Teams because she has an open door policy. I need that as an employee. Same with the lady who runs the practice. I can pick up my phone. It could be 9, 10 o'clock at night. I can call her or text her. She'll say, hey, Tammy. How are you? And how can I help you? What do you need? This is what she does for me. And um, know, know the type of manager you need, the type of support you need. Know the type of partner you need in love. And, you know, um, trust your intuition with that. Okay. I am going to get on up out of here. I am so glad it's Friday. I don't know what to do. I don't even have any major plans today after work. Just being Friday is good enough for me. Tomorrow, I'm hoping <laughs> to check out my high school classmates. Um, man, how many years has it been? Long story short, I graduated in 1987. So um, I think that's like 34 years. That's nuts. That is nuts. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so hopefully, I don't know if is that, is that right? Anyway, I'm not good with math. I hope to see some of them tomorrow. We have a park here outside of Chicago and our high school, if you're in the park, you'll see class of 71 here, 77, class of 80, class of 87. That's my class. I mean, just all these different classes having their picnic 
due to COVID, it's been um, stopped. So this is the first one since 2019. So it looks like it's going to be kind of hot tomorrow. But I think I'm going to still pop out and see people. I just feel like as we get older, this stuff is important. You know, you really want to stay connected and appreciate those that you love. I had a good time in high school, such good fond memories. And my class, we stick together. We very close, all of us. So I'm, I'm grateful to God for that. Love you all so, so much. Thank you, every new subscriber. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the comments. Thank you, Simplistic Motivation, for always sharing. And everybody that supports me, you all know how I feel. God bless you all. Have a beautiful Friday and an even better weekend. Bye-bye.